Dear friends and family of God, peace to you and your loved ones in the name of Jesus. Today I need to continue with a passage in Acts chapter 17. We will read from verse 26 to verse 28. Scripture says, From one man he made all the nations, that they should inhabit the whole earth, and he marked out the appointed times in history and the boundaries of the lands. God did this so that they would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him, though he is not far from any one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. Let me read that again. For in him we live and move and have our being. It is fascinating that the nations of the world came into being as a result of God creating one man. And obviously, we know that scripture tells us that God said that it is not good for man to be alone. And thus he created the woman in Genesis 2 verse 18. God therefore marked out the boundaries of nations and their appointed times in history. Now scripture tells us that he did this so that they would seek him and perhaps reach out to him though he is not far from any of us. Matthew 6 verse 33 tells us, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. Seek first his kingdom. You see, when we seek the kingdom, you and I, we will find the king. But finding the king also means that you will discover his righteousness. Let me say that again. By finding the king, it also means that we will discover his righteousness. This means aligning ourselves to his moral and ethical conduct. Only then will the other things be added to us. But sadly, we have grown so accustomed to chasing after the other things and losing sight of searching the king. Acts chapter 17 verse 27 makes it clear that he did this so that we might perhaps reach out to him. You see, I'm immediately attracted to that word perhaps. That word perhaps denote uncertainty or possibility. My friend, Truly knowing God, is it is exactly that. It is about whether we are living in uncertainty or grounding ourselves in the reality of God's unending possibility. The first step we need to do is reach out to Him. Scripture tells us that He is not far from any one of us. Then verse 28 says, In Him we live, move, and have our being. It is abundantly clear that the equation of life for us is living in Him, moving in Him, and having our being in Him. Being in relationship with the Lord cannot be from the position where we are running alongside Him. Now John chapter 10 verse 10 says, The thief comes only to steal and to kill and to destroy. But I have come that you may have life and have it to the full or in abundance. In other words, Jesus speaks of abundant life. But you see, the abundant life described by Jesus in the preceding verse means that we have really and fully immersed ourselves and every facet of our lives in him. Once again, Often some have tried to immerse themselves into the blessings without recognizing that we should first plunge deep into the Lord and his kingdom, including his righteousness, and then the blessing will follow. Therefore, when the Apostle Paul speaks about having our being in him, it speaks of Christ being the very foundation of our lives. It is often fascinating to note that our way of living and the way we move, our moral fiber comes as a key result of who we are, we are at the core of our being. 
No wonder the Apostle Paul could confidently say in Philippians 1 verse 21, For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Wow! What a powerful statement. To be in relationship with the Lord is to have the foundation of our being built on Christ. And this then allows us when the storm comes to test our resolve. When the battering hail comes to test our lives, when our lives are shaken, we do as scripture tells us in 2 Corinthians 4 verse 8 to 10. When it says, we are hard pressed on every side, but we are not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. We always carry in our bodies the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. That is some deep stuff right there. I'm certain that there were moments when you were at your lowest and you had no idea whether you would ever make it. But though you were hard pressed on every side, you were not in despair. When you were persecuted, oh, but you were never abandoned. Do you remember when you stood at the brink of caving in and you were struck down, but you were not destroyed? You managed to bounce back. My friend, and that was as a result of the Lord. May I say something to you today? For the longest time, believers have focused their gaze on the politics of the day. They've been entertained by the patterns of this world and forgotten the identity of being a child of God. I urge you today by God's Spirit, hear the voice of Him calling us into deeper relationship with Him. Even greater, hear what Jesus says in Luke chapter 17 verses 20 to 21. Scripture says, being asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, he answered them, the kingdom of God is not coming in ways that can be observed, nor will they say, look, here is it, or there, for behold, the kingdom of God is in the midst of you. Can I say that again? Oh, the kingdom of God is is in the midst of you. Oh, glory to God. Hear yeah, the Spirit of the Lord say today, the kingdom of God is in your midst. Jesus was telling them, the kingdom of heaven is in your midst. If you will only reach out to him by faith and receive him, to you struggling to breathe, to you backslidden and in need of forgiveness, to you currently deep in grief and feeling as if the Lord has abandoned you, I say to you by God's Spirit, the kingdom of God is in your midst. Hear the Spirit today. The King of the kingdom is near you. Reach out to Him in faith and enter into relationship with Him. And my friend, as you do, receive healing from the great physician. Be healed in the name of Jesus and allow him to restore your life today. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you once again for your word. Lord, we want to know you and therefore we receive your healing. Lord, we acknowledge that we have often sought the blessing without recognizing the blesser. Forgive us this very moment, Lord, and make us aware that the kingdom of God is in our midst. We thank you, Lord, not merely for knowing about you, but thank you for your unfailing love and receive our gratitude in Jesus' name. Amen.